What's going on internet? IG here again today with another Linux distro review. Today we're going to be checking out Debian 7.0, also known as Wheezy. <laughs> Okay, so Debian is really such a universal operating system nowadays in that many distributions are based off it. You have ones based off Debian directly, some of them based off uh, Debian stable, Debian testing, and it really depends on the, 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 the aim of the actual distribution as to which branch of Debian uh, the various distributions are based off. But every year or so, there is a final stable snapshot of Debian, which is an otherwise very rolling and incremental and evolutionary operating system. So Debian 7.0 dropped a few months ago and I've had a few requests to take a look at it and it's quite a nice distribution, very universal and very simple to understand and get a grasp of. Hence, it's become the base of so many popular distributions like Ubuntu or Linux Mint Debian Edition or any number of hundreds of distributions out there. It's got some great infrastructure, so let's take a look, shall we? So here you can see I'm running the GNOME edition of Debian and Debian 7.0, like any Debian release before, it comes in many different shapes and sizes. You can download it in almost any edition that you please, supporting any desktop environment that uh, is your preference, LXDE, XFC, KDE, GNOME, any of those packages because it supports such a vast array of desktop environments and packages, you're really not left uh, in the dark as far as wanting a particular choice. So I went with the GNOME 3 or the default GNOME desktop simply because it's been a while since I looked at it and I'll be interested to see what GNOME looks like when it's not all crashy and buggy. And just so you know, this is what it looks like. It is an older version of GNOME. Obviously the point of Debian stable or the, or the Debian 7.0 Wheezy is to be a stable operating system that others can base distributions off or implement it in a very production centered environment where work needs to get done and they need it to get done with stability and security. Debian's really been a flagship open source project for many years now. Uh, they've supported a lot of open source development over the years and it's great to see that of course with Debian Wheezy and with each new release that rolls out every year they still bring the same stability with slightly more updated packages. They go through quite a rigorous testing procedure and that's why they have the various tiers of the Debian development branch so that if you want up-to-date software you can run up-to-date software with all the bugs and crashes that might come along with it as the fixes and bug fixes get filtered down those package versions and versions of the desktop environment move down to the next level making it more stable and more ready for a work centered environment so that of course leaves us with a desktop that is quite vanilla and a little bit antiquated by the time it comes out but very very stable and ready for some serious business. It also gives you an opportunity to see what the default desktop environments look like without any sort of polish or finish added by the, the various um, distribution teams like OpenSUSE or Ubuntu. Basically Debian just package up the vanilla uh, the vanilla packages straight from the developers and stabilize them over time and then push them out into their main system. As with any distribution, uh, it's definitely gotten better over time and obviously the packages get better which means the overall functionality of the distribution gets better over time. But uh, you'll definitely notice that you really don't get a lot straight out of the box here when you install. It very much depends on which distribution or which edition that you download from Debian's website. You'll get enough to have a basic open source desktop, but it's certainly not gonna be something that you give to the new user and expect for them to get off trouble free. Now, as you can see, I am running this inside VirtualBox, so it is a little bit slower than what it would be on native hardware. But you can see even just by the software versions of some of the programs that I've got running here, such as Inkscape and LibreOffice, that uh, these versions are getting a little bit old now, but that's the whole point. It's stability over the, the, the fresh hotness and functionality that most distributions uh, boast today. Now, one thing that surprised me was resource management. I wasn't, I was expecting very low resource, uh, resource usage. As you can see here, it's uh, released 7.1 at the time of the recording of this video where we're rocking GNOME 3.4.2 which like I said is pretty old um, but really what surprised me was the resources I can remember when I reviewed the Debian 6.0 the XFC edition it was one of the lowest resource usage distributions that I'd ever seen as you can see here it's certainly not a resource hog by any stretch of the imagination but it is running at a solid 340 megs uh, out of the 2 gig of RAM that I've assigned it uh, now this doesn't really translate uh, into much in modern day terms as you know most of us usually have plenty of RAM to throw around 
but uh, definitely for a distribution that prides itself in being uh, in being very vanilla, very basic, and thus not many resources being used, uh, it still is pretty thirsty for for a distribution like that. Now, of course, most of this boils down to the fact that GNOME has gotten a lot heavier over the years, and uh, GNOME 3.4 is definitely a uh, testament to that. But certainly if you want a lighter desktop or a lighter distribution, faster performance, then go with a lighter desktop environment such as XFC or LXD. You'll also notice that a lot of the applications that you get are vanilla applications in that they try to distance themselves from any other organization or brand that might get confused or might get them in trouble in the open source world. Now a lot of software obviously that is open source is fine to package in, but for example, they do unbranded versions of things such as Ice Weasel, which is basically a, an unbranded version of Firefox. And they package in a lot of the GNOME software so that you get the full vanilla GNOME experience, which is, I think is a great thing. One interesting inclusion here is Tomboy Notes with uh, the inclusion of all the Mono libraries that it includes. Most people don't really like the, the presence of Mono in distributions nowadays, so there is an alternative out there, GNotes, which I'm kind of surprised they threw that in there because obviously that brings in uh, a few more libraries that they have to install. But you get a basic amount of software here just to get your uh, basic open source computing stuff done. But really Debian serves ultimately as a base. It has a vast user repository out there and you can see Synaptic Package Manager is here to help you out along with the add remove uh, software program from the GNOME side of things that you usually see on distributions like Fedora. So it's not exactly focused on making software easy to install, but Debian as a infrastructure, the, 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 the system that they use to manage all of the software and apt-get is simply state-of-the-art. It's one of the easiest and most effective package management systems out there. And obviously I'm gonna start an RPM versus Deb war in the comments, but this has always been my preference when it comes to package management. I think Deb, uh, Debs have always been more efficient and uh, definitely the package management system is easier to get your head around as a new user. Hence, that's why Ubuntu uses it, Linux Mint Debian Edition uses it, and many other distributions as well. So at the end of the day, Debian is really for those users who want a very stable, rock solid distribution that has minimal contamination from other developers or third parties. It has support for almost all the software and desktop environments you could possibly want, and it, you really build what you want with the convenience of apt-get and the vast repository that it also has attached to it. Great things have come from the Debian project, and they're definitely not going to be going anywhere anytime soon. They're definitely one of the flagship open source operating systems out there today. So if you want a very stable vanilla base from which to build your dream distribution or a desktop production system or a workspace enterprise ready workstation, then Debian 7.0 or the Debian stable channel is definitely going to be your best bet. Okay, so as Debian is such a universal operating system, what do you think are the best derivatives out there or the best distributions that are based off Debian? Let me know in the comments below. I know there are some solid ones out there produced by the Linux Mint Debian Edition team, including some KDE variants, which I haven't had a look at before, so I might take, get around to taking a review of them. But definitely let me know of your favorite Debian variants in the comments below. I've had a look at a few in the past and I'll put some links down to the ones that I've reviewed in the past below. But as always, you can follow me on Twitter, Google Plus, or Facebook where I post stuff that I find interesting on the webs occasionally. And if you like this video, then definitely hit the thumbs up button. It does help out the channel. And if you like this content on a regular basis, hit the subscribe button up in the corner there or down below. And with all that, I shall see you in the very near future. I've got a review coming up of two very interesting flagship phones from the Android world in the past uh, few months. The Sony Xperia Z or Z, depending on which hemisphere of the world you're from, and the Galaxy S4, naturally. So look forward to those in the near future. As always, recommendations are welcome. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.